Hello, Flimsy Lunch Tray here with a Gold League ranked match for you in Sea of Fortune and Domination Mode in the Tech Tree Tier 10 US Destroyer, The Gearing. So on today's topic of the video, I'm going to be sharing just my experience and input from playing ranked battles, um, not just this ranked season, but also previous ranked seasons. And that is the key to winning ranked battles is patience. So we're going to start off here, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, as we have the uh, the commander of the U.S., or commander of naval forces, has showed up in chat, uh, telling us all where to position at on the map. <laughs> I thought about giving him sass, but then uh, I decided not to. Oh, and by the way, I do have a new microphone set up I'm testing out. I have the HyperX Quadcaster microphone, uh, so hopefully it sounds a bit better sound quality than the previous microphone. If you like it, let me know in chat in the comments so um i have noticed and ranked uh in previous seasons but it seems to have really stood out in this season as well is that a lot of players just tend to rush and yellow in whether that be on the enemy team or even your own team it's just i'm seeing it all the time and you guys probably if you did catch my uh, epic match uh, in wooster uh, you'll notice that I was that in this battle it was uh, this map uh, different match and battle of course uh, but you'll see how the enemy team just kind of flung themselves into the center of the cap and we were able to uh, win pretty well and doing quite well in that match um, and just to talk about some of those things uh, of what I'm typically seeing maybe this is you as a player that do this I'm not sure um, but is I see, starting with destroyers, I see a lot of destroyers who just immediately rush and go for the, the caps. And while caps are important, it's not pressing to do that right at the start of a ranked match. As you can see here, I'm uh, going out uh, on the flank here. And that is because I want to know where the radars on the enemy team are. They have a Petropavlosk, they have a Des Moines, they have a Salem. And I want to know where those radars are at before I make a cap play. So right now I'm just intelligence gathering for my cruisers and my battleships and just providing spotting. So hopefully we get some good spotting damage in here as well. So knowing that the, the Petro is, uh, Pavlovsk is here, you can see I'm already, I've got the engine boost going. We are just uh, going to try to get outside that 12 kilometer radar range as we don't want us to deal with that as I try to drop torpedoes because I'm expecting him to push up behind that island. Um, furthermore, uh, I also see with a lot of cruisers, I see cruisers who also will follow destroyers rushing right behind them going to the cap, and then as soon as they're detected by the enemy destroyer, um, or maybe even a cruiser, they immediately pull a U-turn, showing full broadside to the battleships who are just waiting for a nice juicy target to shoot at, and I've watched multiple times cruisers get dove struck in front of me, uh, <laughs> in front of me, and that's even when I'm in a destroyer, or I'm in a battleship and I see it happen, uh, or just get multiple citadels by Thunder, uh, Shikishima, so on and so forth. Um, and then I've even seen battleship players, not too much also rush and push in. Usually I'm, the meta I'm seeing with battleship players is that they tend to wait and sit around the back and providing some good covering fire. So it's usually the mistakes I see tend to lie with uh, the destroyers and the cruisers um, and just put overextending way too early in the battle. And you saw a little bit ago how that Salem was asking me to pop smokescreen uh, through there, which I didn't. Uh, one was because uh, smokescreens are torpedo magnets. I didn't know where the enemy destroyer was. Now we, we do just saw, now we know where the gearing was because I've been RPF this uh, whole time. And so I knew he was somewhere out here on this flank with me, but I'm a little conscious of uh, my Lieutenant JFK, uh, Commander of Naval Forces, who's just flung himself uh, into the fight here. Um, didn't really need to do that. As on this particular map, it's really good uh, for radar cruisers to just kind of sit uh, right on, for example, if he would have stopped around the, the D line, uh, D5 uh, in there, you know, angle, find out what's going on. But now it's it's a little bit of a bold play, so we'll have to see how this ends up playing out for him. Because we really can't support him where he's at. So, 
I'm just taking my time probing out here on the flank. Uh, you saw the first set of torpedoes all missed. Um, the Petro pushed up further, and then the Des Moines was able to effectively uh, dodge and maneuver. And here, uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant JFK, the Salem, takes out the Des Moines right before that torpedo lands, as now we're radi uh, yeah, radared by the Petro Pavlovsk. And I'm letting my, trying to alert my Shikishima in chat just to be mindful of the gearing because he's already thrown a bunch of torpedoes that way once as we, uh, as Lieutenant JFK gets sent into uh, port rather quickly <laughs> into the next dimension with that flap from the JF, uh, JFK, from the Petro Pavlovsk. So I'm pushing up here. I'm going to try to show a, give a buffer zone um, between the Shikishima and the gearing and just trying to find out what's going on here. And you're going to notice uh, in this battle that uh, we're going to get to a point where our team has 200 uh, points while the enemy team I think has over 700 points. Um, and just showing how sometimes it can take a while uh, in a ranked battle um, particularly to effectively deal with um, Finally being able to make the move, because I, I can't move in yet because I'm still dealing with radars. And you can see that the Shikishima did indeed die um, from the gearing uh, with those torpedoes that he fired. As I expected the gearing to do, so that's that's a bit sad. Um, but you can see we have the Gross Kurfurst in the center there now. And I'm just continuing to probe. Now one thing that we are effectively doing is, is that we're getting the Des Moines, uh, Des Moines, the Petropavlovsk uh, to burn through his radars. So he's burned through two radars already now. I'm actually not sure if it's three or four is how many uh, the Petropavlovsk uh, can take. And we're dumping torpedoes down this channel just in case he pushes further up because we don't know what his uh, move is yet. So I'm trying to stay more on topic and not just flipping back and forth between uh, the key to the, the topic of key to winning rank battles, patience, and also trying to give you a battle you play uh, commentary is is because those two things are entwined in this match as you're going to continue to see. But <sighs> it's hard to a certain extent when you say the key to winning ranked battles is patience, right? Uh, because then you can just end up having players that are just way too passive and will never go into the cap. Which I don't necessarily find that to be a problem unless you're dealing with, um, let's say you have four battleships and three cruisers. Like with the matchmaking, right? Uh, maybe then it's the cruisers and battleships end up pushing in a little bit more. Uh, or you just end up seeing more of them to stay at the back. And so a play is not really ever made until a cruiser decides to go forward in that type of matchmaking. But there has to be... The biggest thing for me as a player approaching any battle, whether it's ranked, randoms, in this case in being a destroyer, is I want to know what ships are on my flank. What ships are am I about to go up to? As you saw, we took that flank wide and we were able to discover that there's a Des Moines pushing, there's a Petropavlovsk pushing, um, and then we have a gearing over on our flank. We had the Gross Kerr first, and he's gone into that center cap uh, there. And so we got a good idea of what was going on. And then we were, from that information, that very, very valuable information, we were then in turn able to decide how we wanted to approach the battle. And and just taking my time, you know, we still have our health intact, and it was actually kind of funny to bounce uh, one of the Petro's uh, AP shells earlier, is that we continue taking our time, taking advantage of this channel, as the Gross Kerfus is distracted with our Summers uh, behind him as he's expecting torpedoes from the rear. He's not really expecting torpedoes from the front, and so we're going to exploit this. We're, and playing and being mindful and taking your time and being patient not just throwing yourself in the battle, is that you're waiting for these type of opportunities uh, to appear, right? So we've been, uh, yeah, so we've been radar detected again. So that means Petro has burnt another radar. And I know that the Gross of Kerfus is probably has his hydroacoustic search going. And so I'm going to try to stay outside his six kilometer range now that we've lit him up with torps and he is now healing as I'm trying to get the fire set on him right now. But 
when you're just <laughs> waiting as we lose our Smolensk, he didn't have much HP and health, but when you're just waiting and you're probing for that, that moment that you can jump and take advantage of, like those are the key battle decision moments that will affect a game and change the outcome. And you're gonna see how that changes the outcome in a match that looks like we're, we could very easily lose at this point in time if things continue to go on as they are. Uh, you take advantages of the situations and just look for opportunities to make plays, like how that GK was distracted by the summers and we will dump a bunch of torpedoes down that channel and trying to get full effect. And then being able to put ourselves in a situation like this now that we have this island between us, uh, firing off a couple of shells and seeing if we can get that fire set. So we're just playing opportunist opportunity. Yeah, there's the fire. And now we have the fire and he has no uh, damage repair control party. I always get those two mixed up. And he's just going to burn and he's, he's going to die. And that's going to help. <laughs> so now... The, because I was, I kind of went farther out from the smoke because I didn't know if the GK was going to push me with his hydro or not, or if if he had hydro up and going. Um, but we took our time and we just kind of played it safe there. We're, we're being patient. We're not like, oh my gosh, we don't have any caps. Let me just rush in and cap, and then die because there's a petro and there's a gearing one room somewhere still. As we're pretty sure the gearing is no longer um, where he was last detected. As I'm assuming he's moved towards the AB cap. But we'll continue to take our time, and our Goliath um, is actually on the map. He's positioned himself really well. Um, some of you may disagree with that, but he's this, uh, this in particular player is actually really good. And what he's doing is he's setting up a crossfire and, and being in the Goliath and sitting up over there. So he's just being patient. He's waiting to be able to make the plays. He's not just throwing himself in to try to take C-cap, but he's taking advantage of his position because if the enemy pushes up, they're pushing into a crossfire. So it's actually really great. And I don't think the Montana player maybe fully understands that uh, on our team. Okay, so now the uh, Petro Pavlovsk has repositioned himself in the center uh, of AB uh, as we take out the enemy Salem, uh, the Goliath does. And because I know that, one, I'm going to just go to push up and I'm going to exploit that. That Petro Pavlovsk is distracted. He's got the Summers uh, and he's got the Montana uh, to deal with right now. And I'm keeping an eye out for the gearing as I move up here. So we're going to, our opportunity play here is to push down this channel and we're just going to dump torps into the side of the Petro Pavlovsk. Hopefully the gearing isn't here. If the gearing was here, he'd been able to check and prevent me from doing this. But again, we're being patient. We're looking for those opportunity plays. Uh, when the enemy gets distracted and they begin to focus on a different target and then we can move in um, and make the right move and this battle I feel like really helps show that well because I've been wanting to do a video on this for over a week but I just hadn't had the white the right video uh, come up yet to take advantage of this and now I know the gearing is in the channel uh, or in the center of the cap because the smoke stream that just appeared so I'm gonna assume that is the gearing here and the Petro Pavlovsk is reversing. We're proximity detected, and we're just gonna bug out. And these torpedoes look pretty good, and cool ships don't look at explosions. <laughs> okay, so we got rid of him, and we know that gearing is still uh, inside the cap. So we're gonna reverse here, and then we're gonna push in. Now, you can see here that we are at 280, uh, 280 points while the enemy is about to hit 700. And now they are over 700 because we just lost our Montana uh, due to the gearing torpedoes. So now it's just the Goliath, Summers, and myself. It's a 3v3, but the enemy um, has the lead um, So at this point in time. So it's important to play well uh, when the Summers pops up and he doesn't have much HP. So... Uh, really need to take him out here. One shell should do the trick. And now that the Goliath, he's pushed up, and now he's, ooh, just smacked uh, the enemy Thunderer. And he's able to uh, combat with him now. So that was a, a really good play by him to use the island um, and being able to push up because he knows the destroyers uh, are not near enough to make a torpedo play against him. 
And for myself, I was really on the fence about shooting here or not, but I didn't want the gearing to switch fire focus to me as it's important that I stop their points intake. It's important for me to take these two caps um, and then move in because I was mostly worried about the gearing um, engaging the summers, but it looks like the summers is okay for right now. So now it's two versus three. So in being able to take this time, you can also kind of see it's almost as if the enemy team has kind of forgotten that I exist, <laughs> right? The Petro Pavlovsky just went about his merry business, the gearing left that flank, and so he left the flank right open. And again, because we were patient, because we took time, we were able to make a move. And now the Summers is taking out the Thunder, which is fantastic. And we're about to uh, finish taking uh, B cap. And again, you have to, it's important as a player, especially in ranked battles, to be looking for these opportunities when you can make these kinds of plays. Um, now, and it also it comes with knowing your ship and how to play it. Like I've seen Shimikazes just actually just ride like the sea line and just go back and forth. Okay, then you're not, even though you're, you say you're being patient and you're that far back and you're not a destroyer, you're not really actually helping your team because as a destroyer player, you should be helping to screen, um, spot torpedoes, spot destroyers, um, and helping your cruisers and your battleships um, and, and even aircraft carriers when you have them um, in these ranked matches. So again, we're taking our time. We're executing decisions uh, with what information we have. As I'm about to start typing in chat here, and I realize that I have two allied torpedoes coming at me, <laughs> and so it's important to dodge those. But that's actually because we do this, it's going to help me here. Um, because the Summers has me RPF'd, he knows where I am, and you're going to see Summers torpedoes uh, appear in front of us. That's actually, he did a really good RPF torp uh, there which tells me that he's not just a normal player, that he's actually pretty good. Now, this is the other thing here, and this is how Patience would have won out for the enemy team here, for them to pull off the win, um, is that even if we take C-cap, um, with what time is left on the clock, I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't be able uh, to win this game. For the Summers, all he needs to do right now, uh, enemy Summers, he just needs to get out. He needs to run. He needs to go, uh, you know, J10 is where he needs to go at, right? Um, or he just jukes us and we're not sure where exactly he wins. But our Summers has an RPF and he's kind of helping show where he's at right now. Uh, so snatching a defeat from the jaws of victory, as Jingles might say. But it's being aware. It's that situational awareness that's really helpful as a player to have um, in World of Warships. Uh, I'm executing these plays. So the biggest thing I really want to just get across and convey in this battle is just be patient at the start of the battle. Just be patient. See what the enemy team is doing. See how they're positioning. See what ships they're sending. And then from that, decide how are you going to counter what the enemy team is doing. If you just rush in, you're, you're rushing in with no plan, right? As the Summers uh, appears here um, and seals his fate by not running away. But if you just rush in at the beginning of the match, you're just you're going in blind. You have no idea where the enemy destroyers are, where the radar cruisers are, uh, where the thunder enemy thunder could be positioned, Shikishima, so on and so forth. So you just you're shooting yourself in the foot, and it doesn't help you as a team uh, to win and for yourself to proceed and ranked. So we're going to end this battle with almost 80,000 damage, uh, over 380,000 credits, almost 6,000 XP. 823 XP with getting five torpedo hits, uh, three destroyed, set on fire, uh, three solo caps. <laughs> three solo caps, right? It's pretty great. Um, and then we're going to look at the team score, and you're going to see that um, even though we killed three, you know, we, got, we scored third on the team uh, with our base XP. It looks like 2002. Um, and you can see that Summers and the Goliath are really good players as well uh, as our Montana. He did pretty good there as well. And then you can see most of our damage was uh, to the Gross Occur first, uh, with getting that last um, smack on the Petropavlovsk there, and then taking what little HP on that Summers and just basically still killing him. as he, His death belonged to someone else, not me, but we're in it to win it. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go to credits and experience, and we're going to see that we ended with a profit with premium account of almost or just over 209,000 credits.
So I hope this video has been helpful for you um, in understanding the importance of having patience uh, in winning ranked battles. And that really is a key um, when it comes to winning ranked battles um, as a player. Um, because if you just fresh in, you, you YOLO in, uh, and then decide what you need to do uh, with no plan and you get uh, destroyed, deleted, uh, then you just put your team at disadvantage and not having uh, coming out with a victory and instead with a defeat. So just be mindful of that. Um, destroyers, just just try to screen, find out where the enemy just, uh, cruisers are, especially the radar ones before you really make the decision to go into the cap would be my first and foremost advice. Cruisers don't just rush in and then decide, oh, I shouldn't be here. And then you just go for full broadside to the enemy cruisers and enemy battleships who are just going to absolutely punish you uh, for your decision uh, to then decide to turn out. Just when you spawn in, decide how are you gonna help on your flank? Where are you gonna position? Are you gonna use islands to your advantage? Uh, so on and so forth. And then the battleship players just be mindful to help uh, your destroyers and cruisers, uh, especially when they're spotting and yet you can capitalize on taking out uh, an enemy ship. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And if you have already subscribed, thanks so much. as really appreciate it. And again, if you like the microphone, uh, if it sounds a bit better, let me know as I'm still toying with it and trying to get the best uh, volume, vocal, um, and voice setup. So until next time, take care.